I'm telling you, there's an army of people that God is raising up here in the Tampa Bay area that are going to see Tampa Bay shaken by the power of Almighty God. Hallelujah!
a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the love I've ever Comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in.
worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Oh, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus. Father, this morning, let not one person leave you the same as they walked in these doors. Let every life be touched. Touch everyone watching, wherever they might be, around the world even now. Let the rain of heaven come down in this place. Let fresh oil be poured upon your people. Let the new wine of heaven be poured out. Let the river of God run through this place. Save, heal, renew, revive, restore your people. Raise them up mightily in the land of God. And we thank you. Spirit of the living God, you're so free and welcome to do whatever you want to do in this place this morning. We're not ashamed of you. Come and breathe upon your people today. And we give you all of the glory. We give you all of the praise, all of the honor. For you alone are worthy to receive all glory and all honor and all praise. For there is none like you in all of the heavens and all the earth. And we exalt you this morning. We lift our voice and we praise you. We lift our hands and our hearts in praise and adoration. We lift up our voice. Let everything that hath breath praise him. Let everything that hath breath praise him. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, we worship you. We worship you, we worship you. Just put your eyes on him this morning. Just take your eyes off of the natural. Take your eyes off of everything of the week and tomorrow. And put your eyes on Jesus even now. Wonderful Jesus. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you. We worship you, we worship you. Listen, if we don't praise him, the rocks and stones will cry out. If we don't worship him, if we don't praise him, the very rocks and stones will cry out. I don't want a rock to do my job. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. His presence is in this place this morning to touch every hungry heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's the anointing of heaven just coming right now. That's the power of God just coming on people right now. Chains are being broken. Yokes are being destroyed right now. Wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus. 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 Wonderful Jesus. He is the Savior of my soul, my Jesus, 
saved you and delivered you and set you free how many glad that you're no longer a slave to sin but you servants under righteousness amen come on and give the Lord the biggest shout of praise you to go out of your way to greet two or three people tell them you love them jesus loves them and welcome them this morning to the main event here at the river tampa bay church right here on the east coast of the united states on the west coast of florida i want to welcome you all here this morning and those watching in the nations around the world, across the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, China, Germany, Finland, South Africa, Sweden, Australia, Kuwait, Norway, India, France, Belgium, Netherlands, Italy, New Zealand, Philippines, Ukraine, Denmark, Hungary, Latvia, Mexico, Nigeria, Jamaica, Kenya, Korea, Spain, uh, Singapore, Slovakia, Indonesia, Israel, Hong Kong, Argentina, Bahamas, Cyprus, Cayman Islands, and Zimbabwe. Come on, give them all a great God bless you. Well, say this off to me. Say, the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Well, we're glad to be home. Thirty-three days away. Um, basically, if it wasn't for you, we'd have stayed another month. They wanted us to go to four or five other cities, and uh, just such a hunger. There are ninety churches in this group called CRC Christian Revival Church. I've known the pastor when he was just a single man in the youth, and God really just raised him up in the nation. And uh, 27 locations joined together at one time. So in the city of Bloemfontein, you've got 5,500 people packed there, two services. And then Pretoria, this place is 6,500. And then 25 other locations joined together. So it was, you can imagine, just in one location, over 1,000 people saved on Sunday. Just one location. Just in one location. So can you put, put the pics up, give you a little idea of what happened but just phenomenal, such a hunger. Obviously, that's the two of us. This was in the city of Bloemfontein. Just keep clicking them. Altars packed every night, people coming, being set free. Now, at the same time, thousands are gathered in another place just watching on screen. So you say, well, people go to church just watching on screen. If you love Jesus, you'll go to church. Amen. Amen. There's about 400,000 people in that city, and uh, they probably led everybody to Jesus. They have about 40,000 members in that church. All right, now this is the other city. This is Pretoria. This is where we went the second week. That's me praying for everybody around the building. 
just a hunger like you can't believe. I mean, people are desperate. When, you, when the financial situation in the nation, some places, the unemployment, 65%, people get desperate for God. You wonder what it's going to take for America to wake up. But the day will come when people will make God a priority in their life. Amen? And then this was Cape Town, the city of Cape Town. Altars packed every night. We were just there four nights. Cape Town. I believe that was Durban. I think that was Durban. Now we moved to the city of Durban. We weren't even supposed to go there, but they added it on. Altars packed again every night. Look at that. There was 395 people saved that Friday night. Yeah. So we, we weren't even supposed to go there. They said, look, please go to Durban. Then they were talking to me about other cities. I said, look, I better get home to the, to the river. And then the worst thing was that uh, Caleb and Kirsten Skyped us with the grandbabies, and then they Skyped us with him, and then we said, we have to really get home now. <laughs> That's what grandbabies will do to you. you can give him a... You made sure, you made sure that your pop-ups came home. Yes. Yes. What do you do? I mean, <laughs> grandbabies will do that to you. We got a bunch of baby dedications here this morning. So the church is growing. Called Natural Church Growth. So they want us back next year. And they actually wanted us back earlier, but we said, no, next year. We'll do next year. Amen. We've got a job of work to do here in America. Amen. I want to encourage you, Pastor Eric will probably share a little bit more about it, but Wednesday night's going to be an epic night here as we share the vision for America for the next three, four, five months, what we believe in God to see happen. In America, we're not giving up. The devil's not going to have this country. Amen. And it's going to take the righteous standing up. We are the restraining force in the earth. Can you say amen? amen? The body of Christ, the blood bought, the washed, those that are washed in the blood of Jesus. You know, the devil's afraid of you. How many know that? Who knows the devil's afraid of you? Yeah, he's scared. He's scared of you and he's scared about what you're going to do. And that's why he's trying to discourage you, put you off, get you distracted with every kind of thing imaginable. But I believe there's an army of people that God is raising up in this final hour that will not be distracted by anything. They are relentless in their pursuit. Can you say amen? And we're going to plunder hell and populate heaven. Hallelujah. I believe we probably saw just, I haven't got the final figures, but close to 6,000 people saved in the three weeks of meetings that we were in Southern Africa. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just having a look around here this morning, trying to see who all is here. Great to see you. Hey, I'm glad you came. That's phenomenal. Good to have you. Hey, you here. That's awesome. Wonderful to have you. Hey, haven't seen you in a while. Awesome to have you. Great to have you here today. Bless you. <laughs> Turn to the person next to you and say, it's great to have you here today. <laughs> Pastor David, come. Good morning, River Church. Isn't it great to have our pastors back? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. No place like the river. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, we want to just take a minute here, of course, and welcome you to the main event. 
And uh, for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, you've never been in any one of our services before, we'd just love to take a second and welcome you. Raise your hand if that's you today. You're with us for the very first time. You've never been in one of our services. Wow, look at that. Would you just stand for a second all around the building? That's all we're going to ask you to do. Just stand for a moment so we can properly recognize you. God bless you guys. Wow, look at that. River family, turn and greet them if you're sitting near them. All the way back there, God bless you guys. Good to have you here today. We want to make sure you get a chance to fill out our visitor card. If you did not already do that when you came in the door, just keep your hand raised for a moment. The ushers will put one of these into your hand. Fill this out for us, and then make sure you stop by uh, the welcome desk right out here in the foyer. We have a gift for you from Pastors Rodney and Adonica. We want to get a chance to meet you and greet you and uh, invite you to come back again. And uh, that way we get to know you a little bit better. But uh, definitely make sure you come back again next week. One time won't do it for you here at the river. You've got to find out what this place is really all about, and that takes a few times. Amen? So uh, make sure you come back here and, and uh, get another a drink at the river. Now, for those of you who are back the second time, this is your returning visit with us. We would also like to know uh, that you were back here. So please, if you didn't already do so when you came in this morning, stop by the desk out there. Let us know that you're back for the second time. We have a gift for you just for coming back again. And uh, we'd like to find out if there's any questions that you might have about the river. And we just get a chance to welcome you back here and, and uh, say hello again. So thank you for stopping by. If you, if you didn't already do that, make sure you do that. Want to excuse me? Also, make sure that everybody got your bulletin this morning. If you missed out on that, you want to again raise your hand. The ushers will put a bulletin into your hand. That'll let you know about some of the upcoming events, as well as uh, the devotional on the inside uh, that Pastors Riding and Adonica put together for you every week. This one all about the culture of the kingdom, and that's a powerful message. So make sure you get a hold of the bulletin. On the front, you'll notice all of our service times. Of course, Sunday mornings, uh, Sunday afternoon, we have our uh, Spanish service, La Iglesia El Rio, uh, 3 p.m. over there in Studio B with Pastor Evelyn and the team. And then, of course, tonight is going to be a special uh, night. I know uh, Dr. Landsman is with us, and he'll be ministering tonight. Amen. So make sure you come on out for that. You're going to be blessed by that. Uh, also, we do have the new members class going on tonight. You're not going to want to miss out on that as well. Uh, so meet us at 645 uh, right over here in the RB Auditorium. If you missed last week, as we know some of you did with spring break going on and everything, be over there tonight. Uh, and uh, we'll, of course, be doing the new members class tonight. So if you signed up or if you didn't, just come and show up there tonight as well. And then Wednesday night, uh, of course, as Pastor Ronnie was saying about the, uh, State, of the State of the Union uh, broadcast, we'll go ahead and probably just touch on that right now and, and also about the farmer's market. Don't forget, we have water baptism today right after the service. So if you did sign up or even if you didn't get a chance to, but you're here and you know, you know what, I need to be water baptized today right after outside entrance two, Pastor John's going to be water baptizing people. So come and meet us right out there and uh, we'll make sure and take care of that. But Pastor Eric, I know we got all kinds of awesome vegetables and things going out there at the farmer's market. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, we have the organic farmer's market, which is the first and third Sunday of every month. It's right out entrance one. We uh, call it our weekly bounty. Who's heard of strawberry onions before? These are the onions at the end of a strawberry field that keep the elephants away. It's true. That's true. I mean, that's what they all say. It's just having fun. But all the runoff a lot of really cool stuff. That is the joke in the farming community, though, by the way, to keep the elephants out. Just so you know, that is like the standing joke. Anyways, let me roll on. We have lettuce. We have organic bananas. We have tangelos. These are awesome. And then we have broccoli. We have gala apples. Who likes avocado? These are all USDA certified organic. Now listen to this. We have the new honey that just came out because it's based on the flowers that are blooming. So who likes orange blossom honey? So we have orange blossom honey. We even have raspberry honey now. And I was looking for my radishes. Um, where's the radishes? Are they still in here somewhere here? These were grown in our aquaponic system. Isn't that cool? So these are naturally grown. So we have some naturally grown and then the USDA certified organic who likes radishes. So I don't know why anybody, does, everybody goes shopping other places. First and third Saturday, a Sunday of every month, we have the organic farmer's market right here at the river. It's right out entrance one. And then we want to give a shout out to Stra Strawberry Passion Farms, which of course, uh, Brother Charlie and his wife, his whole family go and they have a U-Pick. They have a strawberry U-Pick because it's at the end of the season right now. Organic strawberry U-Pick. Strawberry Passion Farms and Thanona Sassa. So you need to go out in the field and just pick it yourself. How does that sound? So thank you. Thank you, Kyle. And we want to go into the next thing. This Wednesday night, I know some of y'all just come on Sunday morning, uh, which 
you need to be here tonight. You need to be here Wednesday night. But Wednesday night, it's so exciting. We have the State of the Union address. Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, Pastor Rodney, of course, is going to be addressing the nation. We already are very close to having 1,000 people registered to join in in that service that night through the Internet. Looking at about 100 churches that are joining in. We even have mega churches shutting their Wednesday night service down to join in. So it starts at 7 o'clock here but it goes a lot, I mean, it'll be live on revival.com at 7, but we've advertised 7.30 for everybody else. But you need to be here at 7. And, and every, youth is going to be here, children's church, everything, Bible school, the River Church, amen. And we're going to show you a little clip right now. And this is the pre-launch into Celebrate America, D.C., July 1st through the 11th. You're the first people that have ever seen this clip. And we're just tweaking it a little bit more, and then it'll be live on YouTube and stuff. But watch this in preparation for Celebrate America. The decision not to indict incites protests across America's the country. America's longest war, the Honestly. war on drugs. It links That's America's the veterans to hate Are you hate telling groups? me that nobody at the Federal Reserve is keeping track of the losses, a $2 trillion portfolio? He can't talk about his faith with his peers. Another American beheaded by the radical ISIS militants. The goal of our jihad and resistance is to implement the law of Allah. Are receiving lethal amounts of pain medication from VA hospitals. Buying Tomorrow, hospitals House turning them into profit centers. States the ban on same-sex marriage is officially over. I'm tired of our people being incarcerated. There's a big money to be made in the privatization of the prisons. I'm tired of the hospitals injecting people and killing people across America because they're driven by the drug companies. You can't believe anything. They're rewriting history. Facts are being changed. Things are being altered. concerned for the people because they're not ready you've heard me say it for years if you're not a five you're not radical for the kingdom of heaven you are not ready for what's coming America needs a heart change America needs to come back to God we need to get the Ten Commandments back in our courthouse we got to get prayer back in the school we got to get the Bible back as required reading in our schools, in our young people. The fear of God's got to come back in our country. Who will stand in the gap on behalf of a nation and tell the devil, no, you're not touching my country. No, you're not touching my children. God is waiting on you. What is it going to take for the American people to wake up? Don't look at the problems and walk away. You say, God, what do you want me to do? Don't tell me one person can't do a lot. One woman stopped praying in schools. What can one person full of Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost do? You better wake up and rise up in the land. We've got to mobilize everybody. It can't be just one or two, three preachers. Every person, from the little child to the oldest saint. We need every one of you. So all hands on deck. Everybody get involved. Come on, let's take back America. It's the only hope. Another great spiritual awakening. The thing about this final move of God is there'll be no unused members in the body of Christ. No unused members. Isn't that awesome? The only hope is another great spiritual awakening. So for those that are here, you need to, you see the three points, register, share, and get there. So register, celebrate, celebrateamericadc.com or revival.com. You need to register. You need to put your faith out there. Then you need to share it. Of course, we're here, but other people, we're, we're asking them to share it with their pastor. We're giving them talking points and everything, downloadable flyers and everything for them to share it with their pastor's leaders. And then also through all social media uh, uh, avenues, we're going to have bullet points for how you can do that. And then get there, carpooling, 
We're asking people to put buses together. Also on the site, it'll have all of the accommodations and all the different places that we've negotiated with, so it's gonna be excited. So register, share, and get there. But what we're asking you to do, the church here, is to be here Wednesday night. Even if you don't normally come to Wednesday night, you need to be here. This is about, this is uniting churches all across America for this Wednesday night. Who could be here this Wednesday night? Maybe you're not normally out of Wednesday night, but you're going to make an effort to be here. Come on, we need more hands than that. This is about a nation being shaken. Come on, we need a few more hands than that. You need to let your voice be heard. 7 o'clock Wednesday night. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Eric. Glory to God. A couple of the things happening uh, this week. Don't forget, um, Thursday is the singular event, and uh, they're going to be going out to see the, the new movie, Do You Believe, uh, here in the Brandon Theater. So meet here uh, at 615, those of you uh, coming out to be involved in singular, this Thursday at 615. Then also, the youth are getting together for uh, a rally this Friday, the 27th, um, and that's over at Refuge Church, where Pastor Allen will be speaking. And uh, I know transportation is on a first-come, first-served basis, so youth you need to, and young people, you need to get in touch with Pastor Allen or Kristen about that. Uh, I believe you guys will be meeting here at what time at 5 30 meet here at 5 30 that friday evening and then also uh in regards to youth camp if you have not if you have not yet signed up your young person for youth camp i know there's only a couple spots left uh for the 13 to 14 year old girls and then there's a couple spots for uh the boys 13 to 18 so come and see them uh as soon as possible for more details about your youth going to summer camp and remember that's a little bit earlier this year so Get those details as soon as possible. Then on Saturday, don't forget Platinum Potluck. For, so for those of you who are 50 and wiser, uh, you need to come and be a part of Platinum. And they always have some awesome things going on. Great food, fellowship, and uh, some great testimony. So come and find out what's happening. That's this Saturday, 6 p.m. They meet over here in the Arb Auditorium. You can get more information out in the lobby uh, before you exit today. And they'll give you some information on that. Stop by and see Ed there. Then, of course, uh, this Next, not uh, sorry, not this coming Friday, but I believe it's the following Friday, April the 3rd, don't forget, is our Good Friday communion service. And so I believe that'll be 10 a.m., Good Friday communion service, as we've always done that in the past. And, uh, of course, Pastor Ronnie be ministering a powerful message, getting, ready, getting us ready for Easter. Amen. We'll all be taking communion together. And then that Sunday is our big Easter uh, extravaganza. And uh, as you always know, we do a huge, huge uh, Easter uh, fest, Easter extravaganza on that Sunday. I know over 12,000 Easter eggs for the kids. There's going to be prizes, Easter baskets, all that kind of stuff. So make sure you bring your kids. Invite someone. Man, if everyone brings one, just, I mean, just imagine the harvest. Amen. It's going to be powerful. People, how many know, will go to church on Easter and at least on Christmas, right? If you're going to, you're going to have the opportunity to bring them out, bring them uh, this coming Easter Sunday. And it's going to be a powerful, powerful time. And I know the altars are going to be packed out as they always are. But uh, Pastor Derek, I know you have some awesome testimonies that you want to share with us today. Come and tell us what's happening on the streets of Tampa Bay. And we're just going to switch this up a little bit and come right up here. Pastor Derek, let us know. Thank you. Hallelujah. How many know that we are a church that are radically on fire, believing God that we can turn our world around. Amen. We know that it's God's will and plan that we prosper, be in health, uh, spirit, soul, and body. And that's why every Sunday we come to testify of what Jesus has done in our lives. I mean, you know, he still saves, he still heals, he still delivers, he still baptizes in the Holy Ghost. He does it every day through you and me. That's why we need to encourage you to win the loss, bring folk to church and share the good news. Rebecca, come and just share with us. In fact, just before you go, let me just share some, st some stats with you. This week we had 146 uh, harvesters go out in the street on the streets of Tampa Bay while Pastor Rodney was out in South Africa just this week alone 146 harvests went out and a thousand and forty three people came to know Jesus hallelujah well this year alone 11,840 people came to know Jesus I think God deserves some worship and praise for that the national figure just in America for the last couple of years, three years, is 6,090,733 souls that has come to Jesus. 
The international st stats for around the world with S3 stations is 11,086,400 people. Come on, somebody shout. Uh, give God the praise. Hallelujah. Rebecca, quickly tell us what God did this week uh, through you and as you shared the gospel of Jesus. Okay, first of all, I want to tell you that I began to want to give all of my family furniture to my nieces and nephews. So in, at Christmas time, I took my grandmother's beautiful antique dining room suit to my niece in North okay. Carolina. So um, I've been looking. I saw one. I'm a member of Costco, so I was kept going. I found one I wanted. And I kept going back because I was waiting for the floor model okay. to be reduced $200. Okay. So I finally, I kept going there and looking and looking. And so um, I saw it. I said, oh, it's, it's, you know, it's the floor model. Wow. So I went to the man. I said, I want to buy it, and I okay. want $200 off because you did okay. that on the other one. He said, I can't do that. He said, I'll have to call the warehouse manager. Okay. I said, fine. So he came out, and uh, his name is Tom. And anyway, I, he said, okay, I'll do the $200 off. And I said, okay, Amen. I'm going to pray for you that God will bless you. And he said, no, God's not going to bless me because I'm angry at God. And I said, well, why are you angry? And he said, because he took my wife, 46 years old. we have been sweethearts all of our lives, and he took her. And uh, he was angry at God. Well, I happened to have a co-student with me who uh, had had an experience in going to heaven and saw her grandmother. So I said, well, tell Tom about your experience. She okay. did. And he said, well, I've seen the movie, There is a Real Heaven. I've read the book, 60 Minutes in Heaven. But he said, I'm still mad at God. I said, okay, thank you. So I didn't go any further at that point, but I, I just felt in my spirit I would be talking to him again. Mm -hmm. So we got the chairs loaded and I couldn't get the table in my car, so I had to go back in, and I said, Lord, please have him come out. He came out, and I said, I need to talk to you about the Lord, and he said, come back in my office. So he, we went in his office. He locked the door in his office. He sat down behind his desk, and I shared the gospel, the word of God, and, uh, and he prayed the prayer to receive Jesus. Wow. And then, <laughs> okay come to find out the table was damaged so I took the whole thing back last week and the, he wasn't there I didn't see him but the other manager said thank you for what you did for for our boss he is a different man come so on. you know what a blessing I mean God Amen. listen you know you may think you're doing you're doing something for yourself <laughs> But, but God has a plan in everything. And, Amen. and another one, just a real quick on this other one. May I? <laughs> okay. I have a friend that's like uh, 82 years old. And she and I have been going out to lunch and, and stuff. And she's been wanting to get a condo with an elevator and everything. So this, uh, about three weeks ago, I was able to help her to, you know, do Amen. that. And so I was moving her in like last weekend. And uh, well, the night before I moved her in, the cleaning lady was there from Hungary. She received the Lord. She began to tell me about her 15 year old daughter who was like a stranger. And I said, well, you know, that's the way God feels about us when we don't, we don't talk to him anymore. So I led, that was my lead in. And so she, it was like I could see the glory in the room, Amen. and she received the Lord Jesus. Amen. Then the next day, <laughs> the next day in the breezeway, as we were moving in, a lady from Turkey was in the breezeway, and she was. Uh, I began to talk to her about the Lord. She um, said, "Well, the Quran says, you know, that we're all we're all okay or whatever. I know I saw it on the side of the bus, that scripture in the Quran. Oh but I said, well, let me tell you what the Holy Bible reads. She received the Lord, okay? We went to um, Bonefish to eat. Frank, the waiter who Come served on. six years in special forces in Afghanistan, he received the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, wait a minute. There's one more. We, 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 we. Oh, oh. <laughs> And then the, the repairman last Friday night, who's from Guyana, 
He came over. Amen. And, and, and listen, he's as old as me, and he received the Lord and got the baptism in the Holy Ghost Come with tongues. <laughs> okay, that's it, y'all. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, from Costco to Turkey to Guyana to the old age home, God is still saving people. Ingrid's going to share with us what God's done. He's given you a wonderful miracle of healing. I'll keep it short. Uh, I recently went to Holland to finish my internship and to really put my hand to the plow over there. But I went ice skating and I probably lived in Florida too long because I fell and really fractured my wrist. Uh, understand over there, socialized medicine is not like here. You don't get the pampering. They, they basically torture you, send you home with a Tylenol. So right from the start, I was in excruciating pain, but more than anything else, it felt like my arm was turned. It was just not healing. I couldn't move it. Excruciating pain. So I came back to the States, but you know, it's during those times when you're overseas, the words of we have to put our trust yeah. in Jesus. Because it was not just for my healing, it was for my finances too, because I don't have insurance, so it was kind of a two-edged sword. But I remember the words, and every week having communion here, is that we have to put our trust in Jesus for our Come healing. On. There's too much work to be done. So I came back to the States, and I kept on standing on this word. I said, God, I'm believing no surgery, no retaliation of anything. Come on. I went to the specialist this last Wednesday, and he said, you are going to make a full recovery. There's no surgery needed. Everything is fine. So I give God all the glory for Hallelujah. that. Hallelujah. God knit her bones together of a broken wrist and even healed her shoulder. My dear brother Kenneth, I believe the Lord's given you a wonderful financial miracle. Jesus name. Okay, I, I'll hold it. Praise God. Hallelujah. I am here to encourage every one of you from experience. Because I had the experience when I lived in New York, I was assistant pastor. You all know I'm a Dean minister. And me and my wife, a couple of months will be 47 years. We work in independent, winning souls for the Lord. And I have a new addiction. Now, some of us might have addiction for smoking or drinking. Not, not here, not here. Are eating outside the outside the wall, right? But I have a new addiction that is give give. <laughs> you know, give give is an addiction I have and I want it to pass on. Because we have been given the last penny in church, not the pastors in them, because they don't want our money, they want us to be blessed. Come on. And I was blessed. I, I, I missed a service daylight, and God said you have to go to church and bring your tithes and your jubilee to Sunday night. Come on. I did come, enjoy the service, Pastor Ted was preaching. All of a sudden, I get a letter. Jesus, man. Hey, City Bank said, the $20,000 you have for me, it's yours. Don't pay. Totally forgiven. Hallelujah. Totally forgiven. Amen. Then after God has given me a new van, a computerized system, the phone gave me to drive it out signing paper or money. <laughs> then I went back after, I signed paper. Then after a month, I got the next van. One driver, I had to give a neighbor a cheap because I say, that one packing up only coming to church. So you see, church, when you give and you be obedient to the word of God, you will be blessed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I just want to give Pastor uh, Mike. These are our pastors. How many know if it works for out there, it works for the pastors as well? So, Pastor Daniel, come and share with us what God has done. I know it's been paid, paid in full. Amen. Well, just like you said, Pastor Derek, we've been sowing, we've been in, a, in, a, in agreement, my wife and I, concerning the finances, concerning the teaching that Pastor Eric recently did. How many people enjoyed the paid in full series? been applying the principles, amen. So we've been applying it by faith, and I'm going to pass it to my wife and let her tell you because she was just so excited. I love seeing my wife tell, I mean, she's just my, my pride and joy, so I just let her tell it, and, uh, and I just bask off the anointing, amen. <laughs> Hilarious, hello. Um, 
Well, yes, we've been um, believing the Lord to uh, be a part of uh, sowing into Jubilee here, and we've been sowing and sowing for many years here for the Jubilee, just believing God for this place to be paid off, and in turn, also for all of our bills to be paid off. But of course, every time we get extras, we give it into the offering, you know, never really paying attention to our stuff as much. So um, when he did the paid in full series these last couple of weeks, we decided, okay, now this is the time. We need to go ahead and concentrate on our bills and our things that we have. And we've been praying the word and believing God, confessing it every morning on the way to work. And um, one of the things that we say, he'll even make our mistakes to prosper. And... <laughs> So, you know, we made mistakes in the past and we own up to it, and we, but we also, you know, believe God to pay it off. Yes. And so um, God has so uh, just miraculously put it on someone's heart to uh, want to be a part of that and blessed us. And so we were able to pay four things off in a week. Yeah. In a week. Amen. Amen. In a week. Amen. And so we're pretty much almost done. I mean, we just have just like three things to go. So praise the Lord. <laughs> we're very excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless you. Pastor Rodney. Well, as you know, every week we bless members of the congregation, especially when they have a need. And Gary Wingfield, he has been a member since 2011, faithful in productions, River Kids, we heard that you had a need. We have this check from the church here today. Bless you. Thank you for your helping. Appreciate you. And then Michael Fico, also a member since 2007, Faith and the Ushers. I am student ministry, River Kids. And we heard that you had a need. We have a check today. God bless you. Amen. I want my wife to come stand with me. We have four babies going to be dedicated. So the parents of Jedediah Adriana Jones, if you come, bring Skylar with you. Raymond and Shawnee Salias, bring Reagan, Mornay Salias with you. Carolina and Merlin Calero, bring Giovanni Isaiah Calero with you. And then Japonica Ferrell, bring Ni Hemaya Lenora Robinson, yeah. And this wonderful. Well, there's two other couples we're waiting for. Come on down. Well, he's sleeping, isn't he? He's peaceful sleeping. All right, one other couple. Come on, bring that baby. Come over this side, sister. Come over this side. Isn't that awesome? He's just peacefully sleeping there. Is he sleeping? Good. Awake. Awake. Okay. Too awake, too sleep. I want you to just look at me for a moment. You know, children are the most phenomenal gift that the Lord can give to any family. Uh, you know, we had three of them. One's in heaven, of course. Had I known what I know now, probably would have had about eight or nine. Of course, I was trying to Spare, spare my wife. My mom's moaning over on that side, but what a blessing that they are. I think sometimes the things that we get irritated in when we look at our children, we see ourselves in them. And uh, that's the thing that I'm going to ask you to be lenient on because you can't beat yourself out of them. So uh, have compassion on them because they really don't have a, a chance. They come right from you. And so that's what you got. But the Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. And today, as we dedicate them to the Lord, we're going to believe that God raised them up to be used mightily in his kingdom. And that his wisdom rests upon them. That sickness and disease will be far from them. That the Lord will protect them. And that you're going to see the hand of God upon them. Even from, very, from the moment they can begin to speak, you're going to see the hand of God on their life. And so we're going to do that today. I want everyone in the congregation to stretch your hand out towards these precious families and these kids. And we're going to dedicate them right now in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for these little ones that have been brought to us today. And we dedicate them to you for your purpose and for your plan. And Lord, you sent them from heaven to these families. And they're going to raise them up. And they're going to be used of you 
for the extension of the kingdom of heaven. I pray a supernatural blessing upon them. I pray the gift of faith upon their life. Let sickness and disease be far from them. Lord, raise them up to be mighty men and women of God. Use them to extend your kingdom on the earth. Let your hand of blessing be upon them. And so as we come down right now, and I lay my hands upon this little one, thank you for your anointing upon him. In Jesus' name, that you use him in a mighty way. We dedicate him now in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost by the authority of the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. Bless the parents, multiply them, and increase them. Let provision be strong upon their house. Thank you, Lord. We dedicate this little one right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost by the authority of the name of Jesus. And we bless him even now. Bless this whole family. Lord, you've already increased them. We can see that. Bless this wonderful family. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for little Reagan. We just bless him now. We dedicate him now in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost by the authority of the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. Amen. Praise the other. Amen. Thank you for this little one. We dedicate it right now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost by the authority of the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Just give him a a kiss. Bless him. And you smiling at me the whole time. You smiling at me the whole time, eh? <laughs> Isn't this awesome? Come on, give the Lord praise. So do the rest of you have children? You didn't hear me what I said. To the rest of you have children. No, you didn't hear what I said. To the rest of you have more children. Come on, guys. What are you looking at me like that for? I can't imagine what it would be like to have some of your kids running around. Come on. It's time now. Lord, bless them with, with a family. In Jesus' name. Come on, Tony, Leslie, come on. I'm picking on you today. Come on. I believe that's the Lord. Amen. I see the anointing on you to have children. My God, I see it. I can't imagine the pictures of all your kids. It's going to be phenomenal. Bless them. Amen. How many believing for supernatural provision this next week? Who needs some mountains to be moved out of the way? Come on, let's put our faith out and let's believe God as Pastor Donica comes and shares and we receive the morning tithes and offerings. Amen. Open your Bibles to Psalm 21. Psalm 21 and verse 1, the Amplified, it says, The King David shall joy in your strength, O Lord, and in your salvation. How greatly shall he rejoice. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. Selah. Pause and think about that. Hallelujah. We need to think about God's goodness to us. Amen. It, our thoughts need to be full of God's goodness to us. Not the bad news, not the circumstances, but our heart and our mind needs to be full of the goodness of God and all the good things that he has done for us. For you send blessings of good things to meet him. You set a crown of pure gold on his head. Now this blessing is not exclusive to David, but it is something that each and every one of us can grab a hold of. David was called by God a man after his own heart. He was a man that honored the Lord, that worshiped the Lord, that put God first in everything, that wasn't ashamed of God. You know, when the ark was brought back, the Philistines stole the ark and 
trouble came their way. And they realized we have dishonored the Lord God of the Israelites. And so they called them and they said, come fetch your stuff because your stuff is bringing a curse on us. Hallelujah. Listen, you got to be careful not to touch the things of God in an unrighteous manner and with the wrong attitude, with a disrespectful attitude toward God. Amen. And so everybody was afraid, even the Israelites. But when they brought the ark in, to, they, they kind of brought it halfway. They didn't bring it all the way. But they brought it to the land or the home of a righteous man. And then suddenly, every, suddenly there was no curses, but the blessings were poured out. And when everybody saw that the ark, the ark wasn't the thing that brought the curse, it was the attitude of the people who were touching the thing that brought the curse. But when the ark was brought into the, onto the lands or the home of a righteous man, suddenly the blessing was poured out. And then you know what? Before, nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted it because they thought it brought trouble. But then when they saw that it actually really brought blessing, then they said, well, let's go and fetch it. Let's bring it into Jerusalem. And so David went and fetched it, and he stopped every few paces and sacrificed. It must have taken a while to get anywhere. He stopped and sacrificed, stopped and sacrificed, stopped and sacrificed. And he was dancing. Now, some people say David was dancing naked. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that he took off his robes, his kingly robes, the robes that represented his status in the society, and he put on the robe of a priest or a servant, because before God, there is none great, amen, hallelujah, but he is great. We are, we are nothing. We are only what he makes us. Everything that we have, everything we are, every blessing comes from God's hand. And if we will honor him, then blessing will come to our house. And so David went forward and he was dancing like a crazy man. I mean, he did not care what anybody else thought of him. Now, one of the problems that Saul had, the king before David, he was arrogant. He was full of himself. When he made a mistake, he blamed everybody else, but he never took responsibility. When David messed up and he messed up bad, he humbled himself before God. He repented before the Lord, and the Lord restored him. But he was married to Saul's daughter, who had the spirit of Saul on her. She really thought she was something, just because she was the king's daughter. And so when he came into town dancing like a crazy man, and everybody dancing with him and bringing out gifts. Listen, he's all rejoicing and happy, and he comes to his house with gifts for his wife and gifts for the household. And instead of her receiving him and saying, this is awesome, what does she do? She gets a bad attitude. What's the matter with you? You dancing out there like a crazy man in front of all the people, what are they gonna think? And he said, listen, I'm gonna get crazier than this. I'm gonna get even more radical. Amen. He said, listen, he said, you know, <laughs> you have a problem, I don't have a problem. And he said, listen, in the eyes of all these people that are watching me in the, in the servant's robe, dancing like a crazy man, the Lord will lift me up in their eyes. They'll think more of me, not less of me. But you know what happened? She got a bad attitude toward her husband. And you know what the Bible says? She was barren for the rest of her life. You know what, when we have a bad attitude toward the Lord and the things of God, when we look at someone that's blessed and we get angry and, and mad about it, instead of rejoicing and celebrating and getting excited, hallelujah. You should get excited when somebody else gets blessed because you know it, your blessing's coming next. It's coming to your house. It's on its way to your house, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, there's so many things in life, just like we were sharing, hearing the testimony of the man who was mad at God because his wife died when he should have been mad at the devil because it's the thief that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And so sometimes we get a bad attitude. We get mad at the wrong person and we get mad at God when we have to realize that the source of all devastation in our life is the devil. But it is the word of God and the blessing of God that can override, hallelujah, anything that the devil tries to do Amen. But the Spirit of God, the Word of God, the blessing of God can overcome all of those things. Hallelujah. And can take us over and above. So it doesn't matter what we've been through in our life. If we will humble ourselves before God and worship Him with all our heart and not be ashamed of Him. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 
and not be ashamed of his word, but be a doer of his word. Listen, there's always gonna be someone with a bad attitude that tries to come in your life and rain on your parade. Amen. Hallelujah. But you have to remember that if you're going to let that affect you and let that change what you do and let you pull back, you are going to have a problem. You are gonna see lack in your life. You are going to, you know, it's not gonna be well with you. So you have to forget about the negativity. You have to forget about the attitudes. You have to forget about the thoughts that even come to your mind of negativity to tell you, well, what about this and what about that and what about that? Listen, you need to take the word and you need to speak it to yourself. You need to speak it to the devil. Amen, hallelujah. He's under your feet so you can say, well, devil, this is what the word says. <laughs> Read it. Read it and weep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. David was blessed, not just because he was somebody special, but he was blessed because he knew that God was God. He knew that nothing was of himself or his own ability but he knew that everything that he had that was given to him, every authority, every blessing, even his life was a gift from God. And he honored the Lord all the days of his life. And, and the Bible says at the end of his life, he, he died happy and blessed and incredibly rich. If you go back and read, you know, what that out of his personal treasury, he gave millions and millions and millions and millions worth of gold and, and precious things. So from a man who was running away from Saul, hiding in caves, to a man that was exceedingly richly blessed because he continued to honor the Lord. He continued to obey. He didn't go off and do his own thing. And when he messed up, he repented quickly. Listen, sometimes people can't receive the blessing of God because they have not yet forgiven themselves for mistakes that they've made. You have to understand that you can't live with, continue to live with a mistake. You've got to get rid of it. And the only way you get rid of it is by bringing it to the Lord and repenting thoroughly, saying, Lord, this is what I did. I have no excuse. I know that it's wrong. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And then once you have done that, you need to receive the Lord's forgiveness, and you need to, you need to stop letting the devil beat you up over mistakes that you have made. God forgives you. He, he, he washes it away. He takes it away as far as the east is from the west. Amen. If he doesn't remember, then you need to stop remembering. Amen. Whenever the devil tries to remind you, you tell him no. That's washed away by the blood of Jesus. God doesn't even know what you're talking about, and I don't receive that either. Amen. Let's keep reading here in Psalm 21. I'm going to read back to verse 3. It says, For you send blessings of good things to meet him. Hallelujah. Wherever you go, the Lord's sending blessings to meet you. You said a crown. It's already there. When you get there, the blessing of God is there. Hallelujah. You said a crown of pure gold on his head. That's authority. The Lord gives us authority. He asked life of you and you gave it to him. Long life forever and ever more. There are things that money cannot buy, but the favor of God. Long life, blessing. You know, I look at Pastor Rodney's family. His father came from a family of four brothers, and he was the baby, what we call in South Africa, the Lot Lamaki, the late lamb. And his, because his older brother was 18 years older than him. And, I, and his, the older brother was a minister, served God with all of his heart. And then Pastor Rodney's father also served the Lord with all of his heart. And I, I look at them, and both of them around the age of 65 were on the point of death. And God miraculously turned both those brothers around. The oldest brother lived to like 93 and then his dad lived over to, to 81 and he was dying at 65 and God turned his life around and the other two brothers both died younger but the two that served God with all of their heart even though in the natural their lifespan would have been perhaps only 65 or 66 years the Lord blessed them each <laughs> hallelujah with over 15 and then over 20 years hallelujah because they honored the Lord. Listen, it doesn't matter what your genetics are. It doesn't matter what's coming your way. When you honor God, hallelujah, he reverses every curse and gives you the blessing of long life. Amen. Some of you need to claim that. Hallelujah. 
The devil tries to lie to you, telling you you're going to die young. No, you're not, because you serve God. He extends your life. His glory is great because of your aid. Hallelujah. Only because of God's grace, only because of his hand. Splendor and majesty you bestow upon him, for you make him to be blessed and a blessing forever. You make him exceedingly glad with the joy of your presence. So we are, we need to receive that. Not only, it's not just David that was made blessed and a blessing, but we are made blessed and a blessing. What does that mean? God blesses us so that we can be the source of blessing to others. Now, of course, you know, God's ultimately the source and supply, but we have to be a fountain of blessing. Blessing needs to be flowing from us. Amen. The Lord does not bless you so that you can heap it up into storehouses and hang on to it. There's nothing wrong with having a savings account or having a storage. God will give you that. But you have to not be the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is the Dead Sea because everything flows in and nothing flows out. That's why it's dead. Nothing can live in it. But you have to be a free flow. I mean, God will give you your lake, your dam, whatever it is. You can, well, really, more of a lake, never mind the dam. God wants, wants to fill up your lake, but he wants you to have an outlet on the other end to let things flow through so that it can stay fresh, so that it can stay pure, so that there's life in it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are blessed and a blessing. You are a blessing. Wherever you go, you are a blessing. You're not a curse. Wherever you go, you bring blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You make him exceedingly glad with the joy of your presence. Hallelujah. When we sow, when we give to the Lord, we give rejoicing and worshiping and praising because he is so good, so good. You know, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 9, it talks about if you truly love God, you affectionately reverence him. This is an amplified prompt obedience. This is love of God. Affectionate reverence, prompt obedience, and grateful recognition of his blessing. See, people say, oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. What does that mean? That means you affectionately reverence him. He's Father God, Creator, Almighty God, but he's also Abba, Daddy, that you promptly obey him. You don't hesitate. You don't wait. You don't drag it out. You obey immediately. That means when, also in your giving, that means you don't leave the tithe in your account. You make sure it gets to the house of God as soon as you can, promptly obeying him. Don't wait, don't delay, don't be like Cain. Bring it in the course of time. Bring, be like Abel, bring in the first fruits. Because Abel's blessing, Abel's um, gift was accepted by the Lord and Cain's was not. You, we don't do it our way, we do it his way. And then grateful recognition of his blessing. How do we gratefully recognize his blessing? Out of the increase of what he has blessed us with, we bring an offering. Amen. Hallelujah. We bring an offering out of that increase and gratefully acknowledge him. So our, our giving is acknowledging him in our life, his blessing, his presence. For the king trusts and relies on and is confident to the Lord. And through the mercy and steadfast love of the Most High, he will never be moved. Thank you, Jesus. And then Proverbs 10, says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow with it, neither does toiling increase it. So the blessing of the Lord is not increased by stress and by toil, but the blessing of the Lord is increased by faith and obedience. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 6. Remember this, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. And he who sows generously, that blessings may come to someone, will also reap generously and with blessings. There again, we are being a blessing when we are focused on someone else's blessing. And we're when we're focused on someone else's blessing, God is focused on our blessing. We don't have to stress. We don't have to strive. We don't have to make it happen. We just sow in obedience and trust that he is keeping his part of the bargain and that he is pouring out blessings upon us. Let each one give as he has made up his own mind and purposed in his heart. You've got to make up your mind. You've got a purpose in your heart. It's not a fad. It's not something that you do just, oh, well, let's try this. No, you make up your mind that you're going to be committed to the Lord in your giving. And when you make up your mind to be committed to him, he's already made up his mind to be committed to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. 
Listen, if you feel under compulsion, stop, check your heart, pray. Whatever you do today, do it with all your heart out of obedience to his word. Amen. Not because you feel like you have to with a bad attitude because that's not going to be a, a very fruitful seed for you. For God loves, takes pleasure in, prizes above all other things, and is unwilling to abandon or do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. Hallelujah. The Lord is joying over you. Hallelujah. He's rejoicing over you. God gets excited when his children are excited about giving to him. God gets blessed when his children bless him with a heart of love and gratefulness. Hallelujah. God's not blessed by stingy, mingy attitudes, but God is blessed when we come with the right heart attitude and we say, Lord, this is, these gifts that we bring are not of our own hand, but they are from you. You have blessed us today, Lord. You have taken care of us. You have met our needs. And Father, out of this increase of blessing that you've brought to our life, we give back to you. We give back with joy. We give back with rejoicing. We give with praise to honor you because you are King. You are Lord. You are Almighty God. You are creator of the universe. And not only that, you are our Father and you love us and you have blessed us, Lord. Thank you, Father. We are a blessing everywhere we go because of your hand on our life, because of your provision, because of your abundance, Father. And we just worship you and thank you, Lord. We cannot outgive you, but we are going to bless you, Lord, to the best of our ability with all that's within us. We are going to worship you. We are going to bless you. We are going to honor you, for you indeed are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's believe God this week for big miracles to happen. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, amen, and even Saturday. I want the ushers to come, hand out the offering envelopes. Do what the Lord tells you to do this morning. Make your checks out to the river. You can also give a wave of electronic giving. It's on the inside flap of the offering envelope. If you're watching online right now, there's a peer box on the screen where you can be a part together with us. Or you can give electronically on revival.com. There's a drop-down box. Just follow the Lord in your giving. Nothing we have comes from ourselves. Everything we have comes from Him. Amen. Amen. He blesses us. The Bible says the rain of God falls on the just and the unjust. So God's blessing people that don't even know Him. Amen. Hallelujah. As you're getting ready with your giving, the second thing we'll make mention to you about is the uh, Jubilee. We believe in God to pay off this property. I believe you're going to walk in here one Sunday and the whole thing's paid off. We'll burn the note. That's what we've been able to do since February of 2011. Jubilee is not your tithe, it's not your offering, it's money you don't even have that you believe God for extra. And look what's coming, extra, as God has prospered and blessed his people. So it's a four-month pledge, and then you believe God for it. When you finish with those four months, then just set your faith up for another four months. So um, increase that. Amen. I'm believing God to multiply every single one of you in a supernatural way, and we're going to pay this property off supernaturally. The third thing is the red offering envelope, which is to do with the building. Um, please be in prayer. We're waiting for the city to give us the permitting. If I'd have done it, we would have finished in January. Everything would have been renovated, but we would not. We would have been illegal. Now we're going through the legalities, and we're waiting. So how many believe the city need to hurry up now? We've submitted plans. We, we, we're going to carpet the whole auditorium. Uh, the lobby's going to be redone, brand new restroom facilities are going to be taken care of, amen. And uh, how much has come in so far for the building? About 160 to go. Okay, 162, so that's what we need, to, and we're paying cash for the total renovation. So if the Lord leads you to do that, then grab one of the red offering envelopes. In just a moment, when the ushers come by with the buckets, 
you put your tithe and offering in there, but bring the building and bring Jubilee and come place with you because this is extra money that you believe in God for. Money that you don't even know where it's coming from. But how many know the Lord can get finances to you supernaturally? Amen. So call this place. We call this place paid off in full in Jesus' name. We call the building renovated, paid cash for in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I call you blessed. I call you blessed in this house. I call you prosperous. I call you to have increase in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, bless them beyond measure. Make a way for them where there is no way. Furnish a table in the wilderness. Make the crooked path straight. Prove yourself to them as they step out on the water and walk on the water of the supernatural that they might see your hand of provision and that you would multiply the seed that's sown. Lord, give them income streams. Give them creative ideas, new business ventures to come their way. Prosper them. Even when in the natural things are tight, in the natural, in the world where things are, uh, people are struggling, multiply your people, increase them beyond measure, cause heaven's rain to come down upon them. And we thank you for it and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Just so you know, next Sunday, we will probably be going live to 12 million homes in the United Kingdom on television next Sunday morning. So it's going to happen. Everybody ready to give? So hallelujah. Father, we just thank you that we come. We bring these gifts to honor you, Lord, to honor your house. You said, take care of my house and I'll take care of yours. And Lord, we put your house first, for it is your house, Lord, that is the source of life, the source of salvation, the source of heaven, heaven in heaven and heaven on earth. Thank you, Lord, that from your house comes forth all the blessings that we need on this earth and all the blessings that we need for eternity. And so, Lord, we honor this house and we thank you for your salvation, for your deliverance, Father, for your provision, Lord, for your protection, for your favor, upon every house represented here, upon every home, upon every family, Lord. I just thank you, Father, that you love families. I thank you, Father, that you place each and every one of us into families, Lord, and not just physical families, but we are the family of God. And so we thank you, Lord, for your provision on every house and every family, whatever they need. Father, give the mothers and the fathers, give them wisdom, Lord. Put your favor upon each and every one of them. Lord, I thank you for everyone in the family who's at school or university or studying. I thank you, Father, you bless and prosper them. Thank you, Father, that you, <laughs> that you give them all A's, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you help us in every endeavor, Father, that we are not alone in anything. Father, I thank you that you provide for the house in everything that they need, houses, transportation, for their businesses, for their work. Lord, give them favor, give them increases, give them promotions. And our Lord, I thank you that as they are faithful, you will abundantly pour out your provision upon them. And all will look at them and see that they are named by the name of the Lord and that God's hand of blessing is upon them. And we praise you for it. We worship you for it. We thank you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want you to take your Bibles this morning and go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 4. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4. And I want to read from verse 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishers. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw two other brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending the nets. And he called to them and immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. 
I want you to see something here that is so profound of the way that Jesus functioned and the way that he still functions today is that he walked up to total strangers, looked at them and said, follow me. And the fact is they followed him. When you think about it, who of you would be about your daily life walking around maybe in the shopping mall and a total stranger walks up to you and says, follow me. And then you just leave everything and you start following him. What manner of man is this that has the ability to look at people and say, follow me. I want to talk to you this morning about making disciples the Jesus way. You know, when you look at world religions and you see how people go around to get adherence, they call them followers or whatever, and basically, in some cases, they're almost like in prison. They are put into religious bondage. If we go and study some of the Eastern religions, they have to make a trip to where the main headquarters is. They've got to go and bow, and they've got to go do all of these things, even in some of the other religions, it's the same way. By the time that they are finished, they are in total slavery to religious system. But I want you to know that Jesus doesn't come to put people into slavery. He comes to put people into freedom and put people into liberty. And he tells us to go and make disciples. What is a disciple? A disciple is someone that follows Jesus, that does what he says. Can you say amen? amen. And that obeys him in every area of their life. Now, some people will say, well, that's like being in prison. Absolutely not. Because Jesus doesn't come to put you into bondage. He comes to put you into freedom. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? What's free about being bound by drugs and alcohol? What's free about being bound by lust and pornography and every lie of hell? That's not, how many remember your past life when you were in the world? What's freedom about that? There's nothing free about that. That's bondage. That's being a slave to sin. Walking around every day pulling this, this thing that you, that's dragging you down. This, this thing where the enemy has enslaved you. And, and now he's put these chains on you. But when Jesus comes... All the chains are broken. All the yokes are destroyed and you're free. You're free. Can you say amen? The apostle Paul says, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1, follow me as I follow Christ. So we are to pattern ourselves after Jesus. And how many know that we are a work in progress? How many are more patterned after Jesus today than you were five years ago? Amen. So we are to pattern our life after him, the way that we live, the way we walk, the way that we talk. But then we are to go out to a lost and dying world. We are to win souls, but really we are to make disciples. We are, we are to make other people into followers of Jesus. Can you say amen? amen? Go with me to Matthew 28. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them. He said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. The Amplified says, Jesus approaching, approached and, and breaking the silence said, all authority, all power and rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go then and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. Behold, I'm with you all the days, perpetually, uniformly, and on every occasion to the very close and consummation of the age. Amen. So be it. So we are to make disciples. Many times in religion, they make slaves or make adherences or people that just come and sit in church on a Sunday morning. That's all they do. If you think serving God is just coming to church on Sunday morning and going to a service, then you're smoking some incredibly bad weed. 
Serving God is so much more than just a Sunday morning attendance. And yet there are thousands, I believe there are 500,000 churches in America. There are 500,000 churches that have people showing up today, but all they do is that little one-hour dry cleaning service, in by 10, out by 11, three hymns, three hers, take up the offertory, preach from the Encyclopedia Botanica, the Reader's Digest, and they go home just as dead as what they came. Monday, you, you have no clue what they're doing. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they live just like the world. They act like the world. They talk like the world, and they show up on Sunday morning to Make it all right. That's what Ash Wednesday is about. Isn't that right? Fat Tuesday. Isn't that right? Fat Tuesday. And you've got Ash Wednesday. So do whatever you want to on Fat Tuesday. Because on Ash Wednesday, you're going to put some ash on your head. You're an ash head. That's what religion does. Live like you want to. Do whatever you want to because an ash on the forehead makes it all right. No, it doesn't. We are to follow Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. Let me just say something. What about your life? And you have to ask yourself the question that when you go out into a world that's bound, that's lost, that doesn't know Jesus, what about your life makes them want to say, I want what you have? A long face won't do it. Are you listening to me? A sad face is not going to do it. But people have to see that Jesus is real and that his power is real and that he's alive today. Can you say amen? And it's not just about you being in church on Sunday. It's about church being in you. So people look at you and say, there's something different about this person. I don't know. I've never seen a person, even if they didn't believe in God. They say, look, we didn't believe there was a God, but we met this person. And there's something different. About it. They're, a little, they're a little strange. But when, when they spoke to us two days later, their words were still going and playing over and over. What man of man can walk up to someone and say, follow me? Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Do you know that it is our job, and I know that this church wins souls, but it's not, it's not just our job to win souls. It is our job to make disciples and to take people and get them to walk in the plan and the path that God has for their life. Amen. Amen. There, there are many people, there are thousands of people that have been saved. I think last year over 9,000 people were saved at the altar here, but there were many people that were never made disciples. Are oh, you listening to me? So the people come riding on the bus, they come to the altar, but they're not made a disciple. They're not really following Jesus. They go right back to the way that they were. What good is that? It's not just about coming to an altar on a Sunday morning. It's about taking his life. He's got his life that he wants to exchange. He will swap you. You can give your life and you can trade it for his life and your life will never be the same again. God has a plan for every single person in this place and those watching by way of television and he wants to use you in a powerful way to establish his kingdom on the earth. But the only way that's going to take place is for you to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. That means we follow him. We do exactly what he tells us to do. We're not dictated to by the world and by the world's standard. We don't care what Hollywood is doing. We don't care what the, the so-called superstars are doing. We care about one star, and his name is Jesus. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Because the Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. The Bible says it's appointed and a man wants to die, but after that, the judgment. So our life is not just to attend the river on Sunday morning, but to make disciples. I believe that God is going to move this church into a time of taking people and seeing their lives transformed in a way that they've never been transformed before. Just like we win the lost where he says, go out and compel the lost and dying to come in. You know what compel means? Compel is not a suggestion. My mother sitting over there, when we were outside and she called us in, if we didn't respond the first time, she'd say, Rodney, no, didn't respond. Rodney, didn't respond. Rodney! 
and there was just this compelling voice that made you come in because you know what was behind that voice. This was now you're going to get into trouble now. And we compel the lost and dying to come in, but we take them and we make disciples. Each person must become a follower of Jesus. If, they, if they're not, they're just religious. Well, I go to church on Sunday. I have my church. Yeah, but the church, the church doesn't have you. Jesus doesn't have you. In South Africa, they all, they get my kark. No, but they bound, bound by religion, bound by tradition. And there's no life. See, the Lord wants to use every single person in this place on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday to be an influencer and to turn the course of people's lives uh, right around. Can you say amen? Ask yourself the question, and of course, I don't need to do How many win souls here? Wave your hand. Okay, so everybody's winning souls, but now it's time to take it to the next level, and it's time to make sure that we can bring these people into the kingdom of God and make disciples of them to where they follow Jesus as radically as what you follow Jesus. That means you have to go to another level. Do you know that if everybody sitting here today just found one person in the next three months, got them saved, got them on fire for God and made a disciple out of them, we wouldn't even know what to do. Are you listening to me? A disciple is somebody that's productive. A disciple is somebody, a disciplined one, somebody that produces. We've trained up 170 local churches in the Tampa, St. Pete, and Clearwater area. But sometimes I wonder if we really did it to our own hurt because many places that are not mobilizing people and they're not making disciples, they're just making adherence. And we get people saved to put them into religious bondage. It's time to empower people and to raise up an army of men and women. The only way America is going to be shaken is by true disciples of Jesus Christ being raised up in this hour. Can you say amen? All power is given unto him. All power is then given unto you. You are his hands. You are his feet. You are his mouthpiece in the earth. And God wants to use you to influence those out there right now that are bound by the enemy. And each person can influence in your sphere, your sphere of influence. People that you know, people that you meet every single day. At the gym, when you work out, at the car dealership, in the supermarket, at the mall, at the store, at the gas station, people that you meet every single day at the coffee shop. I don't care who the person is. You're not going to tell me that God doesn't have a special plan for each and every person living on the earth. So I don't even want to hear that. We can take any person on the earth and connect them with God. And I'm telling you, there's no telling what is going to happen. If God could find me all those years ago in South Africa, if he could find me in Africa and call me to come to America as a missionary, when Adonik and I came to this country over 27 years ago and we landed in the country with $300, if God could come and touch us all those years ago in Africa, what is he going to do through the person that you touch, that you influence, that God raises up to see America shaken by his mighty hand? Can you say amen? amen? Every one of you have a sphere of influence. Every one of you know people. Amen. And it's time now. Somebody said, well, we need to be quiet. We don't want to be, we don't want to be pushy. Hold it. The whole world is pushy on, their, on them all the time. The whole world is pushing people into the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's time for us to push people to righteousness, to set the example for them. 
I believe God is about to unlock something major here. I told you this months ago, and I'll tell you again, something very, very, very big is about to happen. I can feel it in my spirit. Something very big is about to take place. Something big is about to happen right here in the city of Tampa. Something big is going to happen in America. I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ rising up in this hour. People being affected in the schools, impacted in the schools, on the university campuses, in the sports, on the sports fields. Are you listening to me? Listen, I was just in Southern Africa, as you know, and they've impacted into all of the major sports teams. I've never played for so many prayed for so many rugby players as I did. I called for, I said, I want everybody playing rugby for the province and 60 people come out. That's just in one province. And they're just winning them and making disciples. It's like they command the people, now you're going to serve God now. You're not going back to that other mess. Amen. And influence people. Look, it's very hard if you yourself is not really committed and you yourself is not really a disciple, then it's very hard. It's very hard to say, follow me as I follow Christ. But it's very easy if you are radically on fire for God and you serve him with all of your life. And it's very easy to make a disciple. Amen. How many what we see over 100,000 people saved in the city over a year? Come on, it's time now to go to the next level. I mean, really, seriously. Really, seriously. Amen. You say, what makes disciples? I'm so glad you asked that question. Other disciples make disciples. But it's the power of the Word of God that transforms a person's life and then the power of the Holy Spirit that seals the deal. Can you say amen? When Jesus' disciples followed him, they didn't follow him for nothing. They followed him because he, first of all, had that command where he said, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. But then he gave unto them delegated power, delegated authority. Go in my name, you'll lay hands on the sick. In my name, you'll cast out devils. In the city of Durban, two Sunday nights ago, or Sunday night, what was it, Sunday night? Yeah. Or was it Friday night? I can't remember. I went down the aisle and this lady, bound by the devil, the devil spoke out of her, he took over her voice. No, you can't cast me out. You don't have the power. Oh, yeah. I don't think they'd ever seen anything like that. People's eyes came out to their head. I mean, on, they just couldn't believe it. I said, yes, we have the power. And Jesus said, behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and of all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall be any, by any means hurt you. And then she cussed me out the biggest long I mean, you can't believe what she said. I can't even repeat what she said. Somebody said, what did you do? I started to laugh. Because I knew when the devil has to resort to foul language, you must know it's, he's, 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 he's out. You understand what I'm saying? God's given you power and authority over all the power of the enemy. It's not just for church, for the preacher preaching. It's for every believer to go in my name, to go lay hands on the sick. You have the authority from Jesus to go lay hands on the sick. You have authority from Jesus to cast out devils. You. So if everybody does the work of Jesus, if everybody is obeying him, the kingdom of God is established and we begin to produce disciples that follow him in every area of their life. Come on, it's time to see the miraculous. It's time to see the supernatural. It's time to turn up the heat. I pray that this next week is going to be a supernatural week of signs and wonders and miracles and God is going to use you in an unprecedented way.
I mean, God forbid that we should live to become accepted. God forbid that we should live to become accepted. The world, the world's not going to accept you. Are you listening to me? One preacher said to me, we need to take the gospel and make it palatable to the people. I thought, what? How do you mean make it palatable? He said, well, break it down in a way that they can receive it. I don't know any other way than just to preach it in the raw. I mean, just like it is. Can you say amen? The gospel must have become palatable to the people. The people need to become palatable to the gospel. How do you become palatable to the gospel? Repent. Repent. Come and surrender your life to him. I promise you there's not one mistake sitting here today. There's not one person that is an excuse. There's not one person that it just is a happen, a happening on the earth. I don't care what your parents told you. I don't care what friends even told you. Every single person in this place has been purposed and called by God to do something specific for his kingdom in this hour. And the only way for that to take place is for you to surrender every area of your life. And this is more than just a Sunday morning. It's 24 hours a day. It's seven days a week. Somebody said, oh, how boring. Absolutely not. Let me tell you, you can't hang around the Donnick and myself and read one book on boring. We, we don't live boring. We, there's, there's nothing boring about what we do. Every day is adventure. We never know what we're going to do from one day to the next because God springs something on us. Let me tell you, you talk about an adventure. You talk about excitement. You haven't seen an adventure. You haven't seen excitement until you hook up with the plan of God for your life. Ain't no boring. Ain't no boring. You don't travel to 50 countries of the world and get bored. You don't see millions of people get saved and get bored. Come on. God's got an adventure there for you. Can you say amen? God will do things through you that will astound your family. God will do things through you that will astound your friends. I mean, when Jesus walked up and said, follow me, I'll make you fish as a man. You know what they could have said? Look, we don't even know you. What do you mean? What do you mean follow you? Who are you? What they followed him. We have to see a whole region shaken by the hand of God. Tampa, St. Pete, Clearwater, this whole region needs to be shaken by God's mighty hand. And the only way that that's going to happen is through the people of God. I know the last two Sundays, our numbers were down here because everybody in the church was out of debt, so they didn't need to listen to Pastor Eric's teaching on how to be debt-free. So that's just phenomenal. I was so encouraged when I was in Africa and heard that hundreds of people stayed away the last two Sundays. It was such an encouragement to me. I thought, I told Adonica, they're all out of debt. That's why they didn't come. was a major encouragement to me. I mean, isn't that awesome when everybody in the church is totally out of debt that they don't have to listen to the teaching of the Word of God? Phenomenal. You know how excited I was? Not. <laughs> My God. What in the world? Come on, come on. God's wanting to do something here at the river, and he wants to get you to a certain place. There's things on the horizon, and I'm not even gonna get I'm not even gonna talk about this stuff anymore because most people don't want to believe me. You'll just see when it happens and you'll realize that what I'm telling you is the truth. But I all I know to do is to equip you and to get you full of the Holy Ghost and full of the fire of God, that God can use you in the days and weeks and months of what's coming, what's about to happen in America. This is not a game.
And it's not about job security because we don't have to be here. We can go anywhere in the world. Are you listening to me? We are here only because of the call of God. No other reason. We are not here because we want to hold on to some job position. We're here for the call of God, for the purpose of God, that God is going to take a nation that has lost its way and he's going to bring this nation back to him. He's going to bring this nation back to him. And America's going to be saved. I don't care what the devil has planned. If I didn't believe what I'm telling you right now, do you think we're good? You think we want to stand here and waste our time Sunday after Sunday, year in, year out? No, we believe that God has a plan and he's going to shake America and God's going to use every single one of you. It's time to be mobilized. It's time to step up from just being in a pew and being mobilized that God can use you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's time to turn up the heat. Are you listening to me? God wants to use your hands, your mouth, your feet. Millions of lost people depend upon you breaking through. Why do we want to get you out of debt? So that that thing's off of your head. That, that noose is broken. And you're free. God doesn't want you slaves to the banking cartels, slaves to the wicked money system. That's why you should never worry about your credit score. Are you listening to me? Your credit score just means you have a lot of debt and you're able to manage it well. If you pay everything off, your credit score drops. So they use the credit score to keep you into slavery. It's time to get the American people set free from the bondage of the system that is around about us. Because I'll tell you right now, everything that can be shaken, the only thing that will stand in the shaking of what's coming is the kingdom of God that will never be shaken, but will stand strong. And the people of God will stand strong. The people of God will flourish. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. The wicked flee where no man pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. The name of the Lord is a strong and a mighty tower, and the righteous run into it and are safe. He's called you out. He's called you to be an oasis in a dry and thirsty land. He's called you. He's called you by name. He brought you out of darkness, brought you out of bondage. He wants you to be his hands and his mouthpiece and his feet in this hour to set the captives free. Everyone is needed from the littlest child to the oldest saint. There's no, no person that's not needed. Every one of you is needed. What is it in America? Is it that people, I'm, talking about the, I'm not talking about the river now, I'm talking about outside here, is it that people just want to go to church on Sunday morning and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, just live any old how? Is that what it is? In South Africa, unemployment is 65% in some places. The farmers are being killed by the thousands. There's murder in the streets. There's over 90 carjackings a day just in the city of Johannesburg. If you drive some way, the possibility without the hand of God, you don't even get to work. You get shot for your cell phone. Just to get to work, you have to go through a war zone. We don't even have that here. People have to believe Psalm 91. And if the police follow you, don't stop because they're probably somebody got a police car and they're gonna rob you. The police rent the guns out on the weekend to the criminals and pick them up Monday morning. I'm not making this up. I'm telling you what's going on. So people have to pray. People have to believe God. And people have to serve God. They, you have to be radical to make it. Right. 
Everybody say this off to me. I must, I must win, souls win souls and make disciples. And so you know what that means? That means you're going to win people to Jesus. Then you, here's what you're going to do. You're going to say, follow me as I follow Christ. So you better be following him. Are you listening to me? You better be following him. It's time now. It's time now. We're going to be doing some things over the next number of weeks and months here in the church. It's time to close the back door on all the hundreds and hundreds of people that saved every Sunday and just disappearing into no man's land. It's time now to bring up this harvest of souls. It's time to raise up this army. It's time to see new churches planted. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's time. It's time. And if they can hook up 27 locations across Southern Africa, then we can start doing some radical things here and we can start hooking up some places and they're going to be new churches that are going to be planted. Thomasville, Georgia is going to be shaken by the hand of God. Can you say amen? Avon Park, Florida is going to be shaken by the hand of God. Come on. I see the whole of the, the East Coast set ablaze by the mighty hand of God from the Florida Keys all the way to Maine. Glory to God. It's time. I said it's time. I feel it so strong right now. Glory to God. Amen. And you, he's going to use you in a mighty way. Can you say amen? Everybody say make disciples. One more time. Make disciples. Who's a disciple? How many disciples do we have here? So now God's going to use you to make disciples. All you do is pray for one person in the next three months. One person that you raise up, that you duplicate your life into. As radical as what you are in the kingdom, you make them as radical. Somebody said, Pastor, we won't even have room in the church. Forget about that. The church is not about a building. Are you listening to me? I know they tell me whenever a building gets 75% full, you need to go to multiple services on Sunday morning. But I just, I can't run a cattle operation. Bring them in, milk them and send them out. Bring them in. I can't, I can't. We have church the way we have church here at the river. That's just what we do. That's just what we do. I, I can't take a service and make a 90 minute meeting. I, I can't. I tried and I nearly left the church. I did. How many remember when we had two services? Yeah. There was Sunday morning. I didn't want to get out of bed. My wife says, hurry up. You've got to go to church. I don't want to go to church. She said, you have to. You're the pastor. <laughs> Listen, I'd rather just jam the place every Sunday. We'll find other locations across the city. We'll hook them in with giant screen and we'll see the increase come that way. But it is going to happen. There's something very big. It's time to shake the city. It's time to see the power of God influence in every area, from the schools, into the university, into the places of business, into the places of government. It's time now. And it's going to happen. Can you say amen? Glory to God. I tell you, God's going to raise up a hundred multi-millionaires in the church for the purpose of funding the harvest. I thought I'd get a greater response from that. God's going to raise them up for the sole purpose of funding the end-time harvest. You might as well. You're doing nothing right now. <laughs> Come on. You might as well. Come on. What if God put hundreds of millions of dollars through your hands? So it's time. It's time to go to the next level. It's time to see our inner city shaken by the hand of God.
I mean, I can't apologize to you today and say, forgive me for coming back so wound up. <laughs> I can't apologize. I can't, I can't tell myself to calm down. Imagine if he wasn't, come here. Imagine if you weren't saved. I come, I lead you to Jesus. You get saved, then I make you a disciple. Then I turn you loose. No, not like that. But I turn you loose to lost and dying world. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. I, that's not what I meant. But we go and make disciples and then turn them loose to lost and dying world. Can you say amen? <laughs> if I could just even have five minutes just with each person individually and just tell you personally how much the Lord is needing you, relying on you, how much he wants to use you, and you could grab a hold of it and you realize I'm not just talking to a crowd. It's virtually impossible for me to meet with every person, look you in the eye and tell you exactly what he wants to do through your life. You're going to have to believe me when I tell you in this forum. What would you do if Jesus walked up to you and said, follow me? Well, obviously he has. That's why you've given your life to Christ. But to follow him doesn't just stop the fact, yes, I followed him. It, it continues because now of what he's going to do in and through your life. Can you say amen? amen? And it's not just for the young people. Don't give me this stuff. I don't want to hear. If you're under 120, he wants to use you. If you can breathe. If you can breathe, he wants to use you. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Don't, don't give me this thing, I'm too old. Don't give me, if you're on the earth and you can breathe, then God wants to use you. Yeah. We need all the senior citizens. We need all the senior saints. Why? To help some of these young people that don't even know what life is. They depressed and suicidal because their Xbox doesn't work. We need to bring some of these senior folk around and show these young people how to live life without an Xbox. That's right. That's right. When you had no Xbox, the only box you had was a shoebox. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody say big things. Big Everybody say great and mighty things. Never say win souls, make disciples. Amen, brother. My, my example, <laughs> it didn't work out properly there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Next Sunday, what we need to do is have an Operation Andrew Cards and get seven people on a list. How many think you could pray for seven people and actively evangelize seven people between now and Easter Sunday? Amen. Amen. Come on, how many weeks to Easter Sunday? Only two? Is that quick? What happened to the here? My God. <laughs> Obviously, we've been away a month. Okay, how many think that in two weeks you can mobilize seven people? Amen. And I'm gonna talk about people in Idaho. I'm talking about people right here in the city of Tampa. Amen. So let's do that next Sunday. We write down seven people. We've got two Sundays to get everybody ready. Amen. And we believe God for the harvest. And then let's begin to make disciples. Can you say amen? I want every head bowed, every eye closed, please. 
Thank you for listening today. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if you've come into this place today and you fit into any one of these three categories, I want to pray with you and for you. Maybe you walked into this place. You've never, ever given your life to Jesus. Friend, let me ask you a question. What would happen if today was your last day on the earth? Where would you go? Where would you spend eternity? I want you to know there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You don't have to go to a devil's hell because 2,000 years ago, on Calvary's cross, the price was paid and the blood was shed. And just like that old song said, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood. Lose all the guilty stain today. The power of sin is going to be broken off of your life. The power of guilt and shame is going to be removed from your life and you're going to leave this place changed. Not by the hand of man, but by the hand of God. Jesus stands with arms wide open. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, I'm going to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come, he says. What if this very night your life was required of you? What if you went home and put your head on your pillow and never woke up? Where would you go? It's time to surrender to Jesus. It's time to say, Jesus, come and be my Lord and Savior. He loves you so very much. Secondly, maybe you've come to this place and once upon a time you gave your life to the Lord, but you've grown cold. You're not serving God like you should. You've allowed the things of the world to come in. You've lost your first love. You've lost your peace, the joy that you once had. There was a time when you were radically on fire for God, but something happened. Something happened that took you away. And you've lost that first love. You've lost that joy, that peace. There was a time when you were radically on fire for God, but something happened. Maybe something hidden that no one can see. The hidden things of the heart. Pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust. The hidden things that clog the hearts of men. But he says, come. He's going to give you another chance. He said, I will take out the stony heart and put in a heart of flesh. He said, a new spirit will I put within you. And he'll set you free. By the power of the blood today. He loves you so much. Will you surrender to him? Will you say, Jesus, come. Transform my life. Maybe it's not hidden. Maybe it's outward. Maybe it's a storm that came against your life. A sudden divorce, a bankruptcy, the loss of a loved one, a sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job. Something happened that rocked your world. But today you want to come back and fall in love with Jesus all over again. Will you surrender your life to him? You might never have another opportunity. This might be the final call for someone here today. He loves you. Maybe you're in this place and you do love the Lord, but you're not sure of your salvation. The devil's always lying to you, telling you that you're not saved. But today, you want to make sure that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. If you fit into any one of these three categories, I want to pray with you and for you right now. Right where you are, without any hesitation whatsoever, quickly, put your hand up right now and say, pray for me. God bless you. 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 Raise up high. Raise up high. God bless you. 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 Yes. God bless you. 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 Yes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Right at the back. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you over here. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Slip your hand up now and say yes. I'll put your hands down. I want you to look at me now, please. Look at me, everyone. In this section over here, if you did not raise your hand, but you want to be included in the prayer, I'm going to pray right now for these three invitations. Quickly, put your hand up right now. Say, include me. Quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Anybody else? Anyone else? This section over here, you didn't raise your hand, but want to be included, put your hand up now. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. This section, God bless you. God bless you. Yes. Slip it up high and say yes. I want to be included. Thank you. This section here, you didn't raise your hand, but you want to be included, put your hand up now. Thank you. 
I want everyone that raised your hand to stand all across the building. Stand now. Stand. Everyone that raised your hand, stand. Stand. Stand to your feet. Everyone that raised your hand, stand. All across the building, stand to your feet right now. I want to pray with you and for you. I want you to come from where you are. Come stand around the altar. Come. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Come now. Come on. Come on. Come, brother. Come on. Come now. Today. One hundred years from today, the only thing that's going to matter is who we took with us, where we live, what car we drove, how much money you had in your bank, because you mean absolutely nothing. One hundred years from today, one hundred years from today, the only thing that will count is how many people you won to Jesus. I want everyone standing here just to look at me right now. We're going to pray. One prayer fits all. If you mean busy with God today, God means busy with you. I want you to close your eyes right now. Raise your right hand to heaven. That's where your help comes from. And believe this in your heart and say it with your mouth. Pray this together with me. Say, Father, I come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess... With my mouth, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. I will be saved. So, Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. Take out the stony heart. Put in a heart of flesh. Wash me. Cleanse me. Change me. Fill me. Use me. Let me never be the same again. I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. And I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you rose for me. And thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this day on, I'll never be the same again. I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord and my Savior. And right now, by faith in the finished work of the cross and by the shed blood of Jesus, I'm born again. I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me now. Now lift both hands and just thank him right now. Just thank him right now. Just thank him right now. 
Father, I pray that you would seal them now by your blood and by your spirit. Then on that day, not one would be missing. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of God. And let everything of the enemy be broken off of their life even now. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. As a servant of the Most High God, by the power of the blood of Jesus, by the power of the name of Jesus, by the power of the Word of God, and by the awesome power of the Holy Spirit, I tell every single one of you right now, your sins are forgiven you right now. Forgiven. Forgiven. We have a gift for every single one of you. I want you to turn and follow Pastor David, waving his hands. Just go through this way, please, just for a few months. Then you can come right back. Just go through this way. God bless you. Come on, people of God. Give the Lord praise. Come on, River Church. You can do better than that. Come on. The Bible says all of heaven rejoices. Of the one sinner that comes to repentance. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. Yeah, we'll run the whole of Tampa through here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All heaven rejoices over one sinner. You know what's so amazing? When you think about it, that that is somebody's mother, somebody's father, somebody's brother, somebody's cousin, somebody's aunt, somebody's uncle. How many have some unsaved loved ones? When we go after the lost, the Lord will send somebody after our unsaved loved ones to bring them into the kingdom. Say this after me, win the lost at any cost. Say this, every, each one, reach one, make disciples. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want the ushers to come with the communion this morning handed out. Pastor John, you come and help me. And Brock, you can come help me. Grab a mic. This is a meal of promise. Can you say amen? 
It's a meal that looks back to what happened at Calvary. But he said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. So it's a meal of promise. How many know that he's coming again? And he's coming very, very soon. It's because of the broken body of Jesus. The Bible declares that by his stripes we were healed. Today, if you are sick in your body in any way, shape, or fashion, when you take of this bread and place it in your mouth, the healing power of God will come through your life and he will quicken you and make alive your mortal body. Can you say amen? Yes. Who needs a touch from God in your physical body today? Come on, let's believe God. Let's believe God. This is God's, this is God's healthcare plan. Amen. And then the cup, the blood that was shed for you, that the blood that washes away our sin, the blood that cleans us, the blood that enables us to live a holy life, and the blood that protects us. So the enemy cannot touch us because of the blood of Jesus. Can you say amen? Thank God for the blood. I want you to pray over the, over the bread and then we'll do that. We'll receive that. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your, your body. We thank you that this body represents you giving your life in replace of our life. And God, we thank you this morning that the, not, that the life that we now live, we live it in Christ Jesus. The joys that we're able to partake in is because of your body that was given for us. And so, Daddy, we remember what you did for us on that cross of Calvary when you said it was finished, when it was completed, when you were broken, that we might receive life. And so we thank you this morning for your precious life, and we worship you and we adore you, and we receive this in your name this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we thank you for your blood. Lord, we thank you that every guilt, every stain, every remembrance of that sin, everything that we've been through, Lord, we thank you for your blood that cleanses us from every guilt and every stain. And Lord, we receive that blood even now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. Receive it now. Come on, just thank him now. Just thank him. I feel prompted by the Lord right now that the people, as I was preaching, and I said that Jesus went up to total strangers and said, follow me. It was like in your heart, you wished he would come and do that to you. But the Lord told me to tell you that he is saying, follow me right now. I'm not talking about serving him in, the, in the, being a born again child of God. We already did that. I'm talking about following him in his plan for your life. I want you to quickly get up from where you are and come stand here right now. You heard the Lord today. Say, follow me. God's calling you to higher. You might be involved in different spheres of life, but God is calling you into a higher place with him. Come, quickly.
where he leads me I will follow just quickly come where he leads me I will follow I'll go with him with him oh the way where he leads me I will follow come now where he leads me I will follow where he leads me I will follow I'll go with him with him all the way I want you to look at me when God calls people it's always a different phases in people's lives but some he called them when they're child others in their teen years others in later life but the fact is that you answer the call the scripture declares many are called but few are chosen I don't believe that God calls and then doesn't choose us I believe it's a case of many are called but few choose to obey the call because when you hear his voice Jesus said my sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow and he doesn't just call young he calls everyone you might be here and you might feel like you've lived most of your life so what would the Lord do with me I don't know but God can make the next five years be as 20 The issue is not where you feel you are in your life. It's obeying him when he says, follow me. Can you say amen? amen. And there's no telling what God's going to do in and through your life. I want you to lift your hands right now. We're going to pray. Father, I just thank you for these precious people that have answered the call. As you've called even now today. And you said, follow me. And I'm going to make you fishers of men. And I pray that you would use every single one of them in a powerful way that through their lives, literally hundreds of thousands of people are going to be touched and transformed. I thank you, Lord, you're bringing them out of obscurity. I thank you, Lord, every blockage, every hindrance that stops them, that stands in the way of them fulfilling your purpose and plan is broken even today. And I thank you, Lord, as they step out into the fullness of what you have for them, that you will multiply them, that you will increase them. Let your very power, let your very anointing come upon them even now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. That's the power of God coming on you right now. That's the power of God coming on you right now. That's okay. That's the power of God coming on you right now. That's the power of God coming on you right now. That's the power of God coming on you right now. That's the power of God coming on you right now. That's the power of God coming on you right now. That's the power of God coming on you right now. Come here, brother. You're about to step into another dimension. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. I want our pastors to come. All the pastors, come and just come in the middle. Just start praying with them. Come. Come. Just be careful. A lot of bodies flying all over the place. Bring him here. Bring him here. Come here. Jesus. Come on, there's a mighty work that has to be done. 
and God wants to do through you. You burn a word in your mouth, put a fire in your belly and use you. Jesus, use him in a mighty way. Use him in a mighty way. Use him in a mighty way. fire, the fire of God, the fire of God right now, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, I lose that anointing right now, the fire of God, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your mighty hint. 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 Thank you for your mighty hand. Thank you for your mighty hand. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Lord, for your mighty hand. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Just quicken them all, Lord. Quicken them by your mighty hand. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. I want everybody to stand, if you would, please. Just stand right now. How many have been blessed this morning? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And I say this often to me, when the lost... At any cost, each one, reach one. 
make disciples. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Praise God. Don't miss tonight, and Wednesday night is imperative. Amen. Come on, let's sing a song of rejoicing.